uh, once again, I would like to invite all of you to today's session. A very good evening. Today's webinar is uh, Art of Creative Thinking. Now, this is a tribute to each one of each one of us who is a student, whether we are a teacher or not. All of us, I believe, are students. And innovation is something that all of us can apply. Design and innovation and creativity is something that all of us can apply in whatever we are doing. So here we are in today's session. Uh, before anything, let me introduce Dr. G. Tangadurai. Dr. G. Tangadurai is a distinguished educationist, a very well personality in his circle. He's a seasoned administrator, a prolific writer, an eloquent speaker, and of course, a commendable teacher for all the years that he's spent in this industry. He's a national award winner from Dr. Abdul Kalam. And he's also been named among the 50 effective principles of 2020. Sir has recently re retired as a director principal from President Presidency Group of Schools. And here he is today. And we loving him, co lovingly call him the traveling educationist these days. He travels across the country, spreading knowledge, conducting one-to-one -one sessions, and of course, online sessions are, have been here since COVID times. So here we are in today's session. He's also successfully conducted workshops uh, in Bhubaneswar, Chennai, Bangalore, and two sessions in Kolkata. A very brief introduction about him. Welcoming you, sir. My talk, I would say today's webinars, the framework would be I will be taking one of these skills, that is the art of creative thinking. So still four skills are left for me to do justice and dwell in deep. I have taken only one skill. Talking about all the five skills in one hour, it, it may not be feasible and it will not do justice. And so I have taken this art of creative thinking, which I will be elaborating a little more. And I would do that by elucidating or using anecdotes, stories, and real life experience, because I do not want to go definitions and bullet point presentations. I would like to have an interaction also. So if you are very keen on becoming an partic active participant, Please be free to chip in, ask questions as and when you require, and also suggest and also respond to my questions because I need to elicit it. So creativity is such that I cannot define creativity. I am not here to teach you the methodology of teaching creativity. I am here to see how we could experience the thought process, the thoughts of uh, of NEP 2020 and the thoughts of great personalities who have, even in the 18th century and 19th century, have given this idea of creativity. I would be slightly touching on Swami Vivekananda, Sri Aurobindo, and of course, Sri Rabindranath Tagore. Creativity doesn't stand alone. It is connected to inspiration. It is connected to vision. It is connected to brainstorming and collaborative efforts. It is connected to critical thinking. It is connected to the mind. It is connected to the imagination. It is connected to the innovations. And it is connected to motivation, knowledge. It is connected to knowledge. How it is connected, I'll be sharing anecdotes and stories and eliciting some response from you as well. We will go through this journey as an enjoyable journey to see how we can connect these thought process to creating a thinking classroom creating a classroom where the essence of the creativity is, lies in its activities, 
And so we will also connect, see how we could connect it in classroom situation so that the teachers and the principals who are attending today's seminar or a webinar will have some takeaway. My presentations does not have notes. My presentation does not have bullet points where you can take a screenshot because I personally believe PowerPoint presentation is powerless when you want to talk from your heart and your mind to inspire and motivate people. So please take notes as I speak. Note taking is itself a great art, a very creative art. I still remember one of my students who used to take every word that I used to speak when I used to teach Shakespeare's plays in the class. I would say I won't teach, I never used to teach Shakespeare's play. I used to enact Shakespeare's plays. I used to dramatize Shakespeare's plays. I used to arouse the interest because Shakespeare's plays are not meant for school. It is meant for higher education. So in order to come down pedagogically to the level of the students for appreciation and receptivity, I used to dramatize. And in the flow of my dramatization, I used to enlighten them. And this girl used to note down everything. One day when I saw the notebook, I felt when I speak, and if there is a flow in my talk, there are so many points comes out, which I myself, and it all comes through learning, through reading, through observations, through experiences, all that comes together. And then I realized the need that I can even write a book. And that is how a note-taking of a student has enabled me to write a book, an abridged version of The Merchant of Venice, long back, about 20 to 25 years ago. So please take notes. It's my request. I will take you definitely through the uh, presentation because I uh, uh, share my screen so that we can keep track and uh, we, I can be able to complete that in the right time. We are working on this both in person and through webinars to, to support teachers. And uh, uh, for example, today I'm doing a creativity. Maybe after next webinar, I will have the next learning skills and the learning skills and then so whoever joins even if, uh, would have the benefit of at least take away some aspects which they can discuss in the school, in their departmental meetings, or in the uh, meetings headed by the principal, give suggestions. Uh, so this would help. That's the way I look at it. And uh, uh, I want to encourage you all to join me in this endeavor. Now, I said about the 21st century learning skill, which is a very integral part of uh, the national education policy. And I've also told you there are five uh, Cs, collaboration, communication, critical thinking, and the choice, the choice of what you would like to. Because even the NEP 2020 talks about psychomotor skills, that is music, dance, dramatization, and I think all of you may be aware, there is an integration of sports into the curriculum. Uh, in, in the, there is an integration of fine arts into the curriculum. There is, There will not be, I mean, in future, I'm talking about NEP 2020, there will not be curriculum and extracurricular. Both will be merged together. So uh, there will be a lot of changes. In fact, there's going to be a revamp. And how are we prepared? How are the schools prepared? I have been going around the country and I found uh, it's a challenge. It's a great challenge. And, uh, uh, and in that respect, I think uh, uh, we all should endeavor to see how we could participate. We could also attend programs, attend uh, webinars, attend in-person program. Um, we are also available to TD Educational Trust. As I said, I'm traveling. I am also available for to come and present uh, my uh, programs in, in any schools which they feel could, could uh, support 
uh, our endeavors. Anyway, now the topic, coming to the topic, the art of creative thinking. Uh, this topic uh, is a very, very insightful topic because art cannot be defined, nor creativity can be defined. So, in that respect, I would say that the art of creating thinking, as Lata had already said, is a tribute to what all of us can do in teaching and learning in schools. But what I hope to share is more than anything is that creativity is not a professional activity. It is a way of relating to yourself and to life. So today's session, as I said earlier, intended to be an overview of useful creative thinking approaches, not methods, ideas, stories and real life experience which we would share and at the examinations of the thought process and methods creating created by people use which can be used to help the students and the teachers so before i share my observations and creative thinking and define the creative thinking which i won't do, do of course i would like to share a small anecdote. In an art class, or what do you call a drawing class or an art class, the drawing teacher given an assignment to the students to draw a picture of Lord Ganesha. Now, Lord Ganesha, in terms of art, varies from child to child, from individual to individual. So the teacher gave an overall idea about Lord Ganesha and probably drew a certain outline picture of Lord Ganesha. And then they had their blank sheet of drawing paper and a draw. All of them started drawing because it was an easy exercise. And as the teacher went around, the teacher saw one child looking at the blank paper and not doing anything. She asked, do you want any help? Do you have any idea of what you're going to draw? And uh, the child turned around smilingly said, Madam, wait till I finish. So what is going on the mental process of the child would be what I would say is a creative approach. And she's thinking over that. So in that way, when compared to cognitive learnings, art gives freedom of mind and allows even trial and failure, which we don't get in cognitive subjects. There is no emphasis on getting it right. There is always an air of freedom and release. So this is how a, a boy is get engrossed in any kind of an art activity. The next thing is creativity thinking. Now here is my time to pause a little and uh, I would like the participants, uh, if they could uh, unmute and uh, one by one or any and uh, uh, answer my question. I want you to uh, observe or see this. As you watch this flag fluttering, what comes into your mind? How would you describe the 
the picture or the video that you are seeing, how would you describe? Can anyone respond? It seems like freedom. Oh, very good. Nice. <laughs> yeah, the, you get the sense of freedom. I mean, uh, yeah. yeah. Fresh air, freedom, our flag, uh, okay. fluttering. Fresh air. Yeah, that's a very nice word. Uh, joyful. Very joyful. Yes, thank you. Anyone else? One more, if you Feeling want. of pride. Pride. So you you have talked. Uh, everything is fine. Now I would like to tell you an anecdote on this. Uh, there were uh, three students who were passing by the uh, a, a place where a flag was hoisted and it was fluttering. One boy said, "See, friends." The flag is fluttering. Then the other said, no, no, I don't think the flag is fluttering. It is the wind which is making the flag flutter. Yes. Okay, see, his critical thinking. I mean, his creativity of thinking. And yet another boy, the third boy said, it is neither the flag is fluttering, nor the wind is making the flag flutter, it is our mind which is seeing that flag flutter. So this is what I would say, the approaches to creativity, if you allow this, as somebody says, the freedom, if you allow this, because the essence of creativity lies in its activity. Next part of creativity, which I would like to just tell you, is that these are the things that I would be sharing very quickly, uh, how creativity is connected with vision, how creativity is connected with inspiration, knowledge, motivation, innovation, imagination, and uh, mind, brainstorming, inspiration, and even, even visions. Okay. Now, I would also like to assure you that I'd like to give you the sense of uh, uh, compliance that we are doing. This presentation is in line with the NEP 20. We are only taking one part of the 21st learning century. The NEP 2020 also says about creativity. It says there are innate talents. There are innate talents. And every student, which, I mean, student which must be discovered, nurtured, posted, and developed. 4.43, serial number 4.43, you will find this. Okay. Now, now coming to our gurus. Uh, recently, I, I happened to get this book. It's a very interesting, and I hope you can see. It says, The Guru to the World. And it is written by Ruth Harris, a foreigner a very recent 2023 publication, which gives a beautiful thoughts about Vivekananda. And Swami Vivekananda, according to Swami Vivekananda, education is incomplete without the teaching of aesthetic and fine arts. Aesthetic is concerned with the beauty or the appreciation and the fine arts, which is connected with creative and visual and imagination. Now, for example, as, a, as an English teacher, I always, I never taught poem, nor did I teach the Shakespeare's play. Poems are an experience that we give students an experiential learning and inspire them to have an aesthetic appreciation of the poem and not explain the lines of the poem. I think this is something which we have to take away from this. And, and uh, uh, he even said that education is the manifestation of the perfection already in man or a, or a woman, sorry, which means there is a latent talent in us, which he recognized it in this 18th 
century. And um, there is a book by A.R.K. Sharma. A.R.K. Sharma, the title of the book is Out of the Box Thinking. And uh, it is based on Swami Vivekananda's creative genius. And according to this, a few lines, there is no limit to the power of human mind. The more concentrated it is, the more power it brings. To bear on any one point, you have a concentration thought on one point. And that is the secret. The powers of the mind should be concentrated and turn back upon itself. I want to repeat that. The powers of the mind should be concentrated and turn back upon itself. Turn back upon itself means you think again on what you thought, which we call it nowadays meta-thinking, thinking about thinking. One time thinking is not enough. Thinking about thinking. And in 18th century, Swami Vivekananda had thought of this. And he gives a comparison as the darkest places reveal their secrets before the penetrating rays of the sunlight. So will be the concentrated mind penetrate its own innermost secrets. So, though creativity is a spontaneous mental process, it requires a continuous inquiry. You keep on thinking and children must be given that experience of inquiry and discovery. They inquire and discover. In earlier days, we used to look at the dictionary for the meaning of words and pronunciation. We used to inquire and then discover which internalizes the concept, the word most strongly. Now people are looking at Google and getting by anyway, that is also an inquiry and discovery, but it saves time. So creativity transforms the mind and the creative people get transformed themselves. That's a great thing happening when creative thinking. During the times of creativity, here I would like to refer to imagine Buddha meditating under the Bodhi tree. Although he may have appeared to be idle or meditative, he was ex actually exercising one of the greatest creative brains the world has ever seen, the Eightfold Path, which is a pathway to an ideal life, a holistic life. According to the Orbindo and, and the national education policy uh, connects to Orbindo also says national education policy 2020 takes the holistic path laid down by Sri Orbindo. And Orbindo talks about self-mastery, self-mastery by the child. So in a classroom situation, if you give that scope or facilitate the scope where the child masters himself and then we clear the doubts. The child learns through research. Nowadays, re learning by research is an integral part of NEP 2020. Project-based learning, research-based learning, inquiry and discovery-based learning, all this is a self-learning, self-discovery, and self-realization, and self-fulfillment, that happiness, when they understand, they got the concept, they, are, they hit the target, and self-perfection. In fact, Aurobindo gave a Three principles, which is a very interesting thing, is that he said, nothing can be taught. He used this 
own principle. Nothing can be taught. We, we have to encourage the child and give them or facilitate them or guide them or inspire them, motivate them in the process of teaching and learning. And he also says second principle is that the mind should be consulted in its growth and to work from near to far. So then comes Rabindranath Tagore. That is how this slide came earlier. And Rabindranath Tagore, he said the teacher can never truly teach unless he is still learning himself. And that is one of the objective of TD Educational Trust and my endeavors is that how I can mentor and support principals and teachers. No one is, you can't say I know it all. I have 30 years experience, 40 years experience. I think learning, you must be a leader in learning at any point of time. And that is what Rabindranath Tagore says. A lamp, he said, can never light another lamp unless it burns own flame. We have to burn our flame of knowledge and get the essence of NEP 2020 through its activities. And he talked about joyful learning and uh, ability to express, which again is a creative. He talked about child governance. Creativity and innovation. This is where, you know, we teachers have to use creativity as not a method of teaching, but innovative approaches to teaching. And uh, there is a small story. As I said, I will share a story. Uh, in Japan, the stores are very small compared to the stores in USA, which is very spacious and big. They don't have enough space in the stores. And they found it very difficult to store watermelon. And therefore, there is a demand for watermelon decrease, diminished. And, and uh, uh, the storekeeper says, we don't have enough space in our refrigerator. We don't have any space in our so much space that the watermelon takes. And the farmers, as you know, the Japanese farmers are, uh, uh, are very, very innovative in terms of their uh, and intelligence. They started to think, what is the alternate way? And so when the, the, the watermelon, when it is in the process of its growth, they put that watermelon in a box-like structure. And the, when the watermelon grew, and this is how the shape. I mean, we can't even imagine that, but this is the, the real reality. And uh, so creativity, they were creative. And their creativity brought this innovation. And I would say in classroom lean, lean, teaching and learning process, we need to have we. We cannot use pedagogy now. We have to use innovative pedagogy. And uh, uh, in that respect, I would also like to share another, and that is the creativity of a, uh, I hope you all may know, a Starbucks, which is a very famous uh, uh, center for coffee and snacks and so these people they you know once you start selling coffee cappuccino and cappuccino all the time people get bored of cappuccino the the people who were in the starbucks stores they thought let us innovate something and uh, uh, they brought out something with a thick uh, milkshake and ice cream combined with uh, the, the cappuccino cappuccino is an italian coffee and uh, uh, they brought something what you call frappe in France, uh, and they put together both the things and uh, called it frappuccino, frappuccino. And this became a very popular drink. Now, when people are working in a particular place, innovation takes place due to experience, insights, 
and continuous process that we are involved in. So you are continuously involved in teaching learning process. You have used so many and you have faced the challenges of the pandemic times. During the pandemic times, you were very innovative. You switched on to online teaching so easily and kept the education alive. I think you have the capacity to innovate your process in the class. You'll have to think about what to do. I mean, very often we think, oh, maths, what can we innovate? It has to be a logical sequence steps. It's a structured thinking coming to a conclusion. Here is an example. Uh, uh, I will, I'll come to that math teacher a little later. Here is an example where Nissan, uh, this car, Nissan car, they wanted to design a car for the European market. And what they did is they selected the best automobile engineers and asked them to go to all the European main centers and also different landscapes like mountains and rivers, snow, and ask them in, in European countries, in, even in India also is available. At the, at the airport, you will get a rental car, which you can use it as long as you want to. And uh, uh, they asked them to take the different cars of different make and travel and travel and feel the feel of that car and how they feel traveling in the landscapes, different landscapes, different areas. And they brought that feeling and then they had a brainstorming session to innovate a car which will suit the European market. Now, that is the kind of a innovation which happens. So, now this is a very interesting, uh, inter interesting thing which I would like to share. Uh, maths is, is something what how a teacher, an Indian teacher, has innovated in, 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 in to the English students. Please watch. Uh, I think that's a very interesting class, how a mathematics teacher can innovate the, and take the, carry the students along with him. And they were all equally excited and enthralled uh, in, in the way. And there's no much of passion and energy that is generated in the classroom. Uh, I think we need to create a thinking classroom. And here is where Dorvindo, you know, I've already spoken about self-mastery. And uh, uh, then here comes an inspiration, a, a great inspiration. Mm -hmm. Now, here again, I want to stop for a little. Let's give us a break for me as well. Um, and the participants to observe this uh, video. And uh, uh, how can you, as a science teacher or any, any teacher for that matter, connect this seagulls flying in the air to uh, any of your subjects? Response, please. Uh, so I just wanted to ask, uh, you said how we can connect this with our own subject, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. So I just can feel while teaching my subject, I'll give an 
I'll sure. give freedom to research. I'll give freedom to ask questions. Okay. Uh, what I'm able to see is they are flying. They are uh, in open air. So this is what I am thinking, frankly speaking. So I will give the liberty to ask questions, to connect, to research for each and everything, and present what they want to uh, present in the class. Like while teaching, n number of students ask n number of things, which is out of box. So even I will be allowing them. Good. Anybody else? Uh, sir, uh, this related to math when it comes, I can say it as translation symmetry. Oh, good. So I good. could ask them in that way, uh -huh. giving a hint as connected to math. Okay, great. Uh, yeah, fine. Uh, well, yes, uh, I just took this uh, as, a, as a reference from uh, Dr. Abdul Kalam's life that uh, when he was a young boy of 10 years, um, the, the second world was uh, on at that time. And he had a teacher whom he very proudly talked about in various, uh, uh, various occasions. I was uh, uh, privileged to attend some of his talks. Uh, he used to recollect a teacher called Siva Subramania Ayer. And uh, these teachers teaching taught him how they used, they used to have a field trip. Now you have field trip for museum, field trip for various park uh, and all that. Uh, he was taken because they were in Rame, Rameshwaram, they were taken to the seashore and he used to see, show these seagulls and uh, show them how the birds fly. And uh, probably uh, in, in that process, uh, he was able to tell them certain aspect of the bird, like the streamline, the process of streamlining against the, the friction of the air. Um, and uh, he also uh, talked about the aerodynamics, how they do that aerodynamics using uh, the feather, uh, which has a pinion, uh, a pinion uh, feather, which, which enables it to negotiate and navigate in the air. So pinion is a very technical word is used in, in, in even in engines. Uh, so uh, he was able to connect the seagull and uh, that, is, that is how, uh, according to Dr. Abdul Kalam, uh, he was able to reach his goal in his life as a, as a, as a missile man. And, uh, uh, and, and he, he, was, he was so involved and become, uh, he studied aeronautical science as well. So, uh, this is how you can connect the field trips, um, the excursions, or even any planned trip for educational purpose. Even in your own school, you have gardens and, and spaces. Uh, uh, I, I had, uh, during my tenure, I had created a science park um, uh, all around, around the school uh, where they had all these uh, uh, equipments in a playway method. Uh, to learn physics and uh, particularly physics, which, because uh, so uh, I, I think this is a is a is a is a is something that we can always take away. Uh, the brainstorming, you know, as you can see, I don't want to go through the video; it's a lack of time. They have a they have a theme or they have a, a proposition, and uh, everyone uh, gives his views uh, on it. And I I still remember when I used to teach certain compositions and I used once to get a points for the composition. I used to have, do a brainstorming in the class, giving all the students an opportunity. Of course, still there would be a student sighing away. Uh, sometimes, and, uh, and one or two students to write them on the board. And whatever they say, it is written. Nothing is rejected. Uh, that is the very essence of brainstorming. Nothing is filtered or re rejected. And that gives them the freedom to air their views and bring out their concepts. And everything is written on the board. And then, you know, with the help of a collaborative method, taking the students into confidence, we eliminate the more important and the less important and finally come to those points based on which a composition can be written. This is, I connected to my teaching life. Similarly, the brainstorming can be done in all the subjects. So. Uh, uh, I mean, th there are ways by which you can use this kind of uh, 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 activity also. And uh, 
there is a very novel way when i went to one of the schools they had in their classrooms there are usually um, notice boards there are thematic boards there are information boards in a classroom they had a unique board called um, uh, mistake boards means whatever mistake they do they write and stick it all right uh, in that particular subject or in a subject wise categorization and the teacher come and they do it during the recess and lunch break and when the teacher comes it gets a feedback an immediate feedback which are the areas the students are finding uh, difficulties so a brainstorming session is a very interesting aspect uh, this uh, you all may be wondering what it is yes uh, uh, this is something related to motivation how you can motivate people and there is a small anecdote where an elephant wanted to fly and uh, a fly an ordinary fly uh, told him to stand and uh, close his eyes and uh, uh, and uh, lift his mind and imagine that he has got uh, wings and uh, by using his big ears as a wing as, and to flap it and imagine that he is taking off and as he is talking off he is rising higher and higher and he could now see the 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 rivers the mountains and he is crossing the rivers the mountains in is the clouds are passing by all these uh, visual effects he gave and then finally he brought that elephant back to its original place and says now you open your eyes how did you feel so the elephant says you really made me fly how did you do that uh, and the fly said i just plucked one of my old uh, wings and uh, pasted on your body now the motivation is a, is a very great experience creativity as a vision uh, where you i mean when i talk about vision uh, i talk about uh, the designs that people can do you see uh, creative designs we have creative directors uh, the recent film you know the elephant whispers is a creative uh, which won the oscar award is a creative director uh, a vision of course is a is a future situation a society life is what you imagine or hope it would be like okay and you can have h e wells long back in this 18th or 17th century if i'm not very clear about this he wrote about the book called time machine and many of the things that he wrote in that time machine is happening now with with the digital revolution so he had a vision that machine learning will soon come to uh, to the reality so and this type of visionary people bring in a lot of vision so if you have a vision of see how you can bring in the essence of nep 2020 into your classroom in, in any ways that vision is in you we cannot teach you that that is not possible and uh, but at the same time we can encourage you. creative impulse this is the golden tri triangle which simon snick um, explains the golden theory to differentiate your value proposition now i would say this this rings can be used in any context when i use it in a classroom situation i say what are we doing we are teaching we are giving notes we are giving homework we are taking tests and uh, how are we doing we are using the blackboard we are using the smart board we are using uh, so many teaching aids and why are we doing because the children have to face the examination okay now this is does not match with creativity but if you talk about what we are doing can we change can we align with nep 2020 how can we do let us brainstorm let us discuss let us in our departmental meetings let us have in in service program in our school uh, uh where you know some some teachers who are attending some programs can share their experience of the implementation of nep 
And why we have to do, ultimately we have to align and it is the benefit of the students who will be having a paradigm shift from rote learning, memorization and examination to creative learning and assessment, a, a formative assessment, a continuous and comprehension assessment. That why gives a very purpose of whatever we do. And we, that is why that why is concentrated. The why has a concentration of power. What is very diluted and the less diluted is how, why is concentrated. And that concentration is creativity. A creative and imagination, you know, there's a lot of imagination stories. This is a very popular books among the students now, Percy Jackson's uh, book. It's totally imaginative and children love it. And similarly, once upon a time, the jungle book. Uh, imagination give wings, wings to your imagination. And isn't, though it sounds very, uh, maybe sometimes insult to intelligence in terms of uh, its presentations and creation, but it is enjoyable to them. Now, knowledge is a, a very important base. Uh, I, I would say, uh, knowledge is the basis of creativity because without knowledge, you cannot create. Uh, for example, this picture that you see, the person has a good knowledge of architecture and so he used a, his knowledge to bring about a creative architectural design. So similarly in classroom situation, we require knowledge. Knowledge has to be there. It cannot be that NEP 20 will throw away the knowledge. Yes, knowledge has to be there, but we have to use the knowledge to build the creative capacity or the capacity building which CBSE nowadays talks about. And here, I want to refer to Bloom's taxonomy where knowledge is base, which is a lower level of thinking, and then comes comprehension, then comes application, then comes analysis, then comes synthesis, and then comes evaluation. So th this is according to uh, Bloom's taxonomy 1950, 50, I suppose, I'm not very sure about that. And, uh, uh, but it was revised because according to the new approaches to learning, it was revised. Instead of knowledge, they say remembering. Instead of comprehension, it's all action word. Instead of comprehension, understanding. Instead of application, applying. Instead of uh, uh, analysis, applying. Sorry, analysis, analyzing is there. Synthesis, evaluating. And instead of evaluating, creating. Just imagine, knowledge is the bigger, lower level of thinking and creating which is pinnacle of learning is, is the creative thinking. So creativity is the pinnacle of learning. <clears throat> And you need to have a creative mind. Again, creative mind, again, comes same to the imagination. And uh, I already gave you an example of, of uh, how Buddha under the Bodhi tree was uh, able to have a concentrated power of you know, uh, creativity that brought the eightfold path, which I have already said. I'll go to the next one. Uh, this is Michelangelo. Now here, in case of Michelangelo, uh, I have a, a, a small anecdote to share. Uh, there was a friend of Michelangelo. He was passing by where Michelangelo was, was uh, uh, working on this. this one of the famous uh, statues, one of the best uh, uh, sculpture that he made, uh, the, the, the statue of David. And uh, the statue, as you can see, is already around as a base of about six feet. And upon that, this tall man is standing. And uh, his friend saw that a similar statue was uh, lying discarded away from uh, in, in the place of uh, the workplace. And uh, Michelangelo was working on a, another fresh piece of same, everything looks same. Then his friend said, why have you discarded? Uh, he said, look at that very closely if you can. And uh, the friend was not able to make out. Uh, then Michelangelo said, you see, if you very closely, I forgot there was, there is no dent in his cheek. I mean, there is no liveliness in his face. Uh, uh, so he has such an insight 
uh, he used such a critical thinking to find out a very small thing which makes a lot of difference. Uh, and you know, it's not that Michelangelo I talk about, even an infant child, a child when, it, uh, when a stranger comes to, to take a child, uh, maybe in a family circle and another friend, a neighbor or comes to take a child, the child looks at him and doesn't go towards him uh, because it has a critical thinking at that point that it is not his parents, it's not his known uh, images. So critical thinking is there in the child right from the infant stage. And uh, uh, I don't know those who have read The Merchant of Venice, uh, Shylock wanted his pound of flesh uh, and he almost was about to get it. But Portia used her critical thinking and said, Shylock, you can have your pound of flesh according to the uh, agreement or the deed, but there is nowhere in the deed is written that when you take your pound of flesh, you will drop the, the Christian blood. That's, that's the way he described it. So there is nowhere it is there. So you take your pound of flesh without dropping the blood. So that's a very critical thinking. I conclude by saying that thank you, of course, and then the most. Now, what I would like to say is almost anyone can do the first half of anything. Now, we are trying to do something uh, for you to see how you can take on NEP 2020.